welcome Dr. Green. So just by getting, exposing your students at a Baptist university, coming from all different kinds of backgrounds, you know, either more aware or less aware, you were on a learning curve and you brought yes. them along with you to sort yes. of learn about the history, the particularities, the, yeah, so that's really interesting. So we have, a, we have about 10 minutes left. Okay, oh, well, okay. Well, one of the things I want to hit on is, uh, we talk about diversity uh -huh. and conclusion. I think a lot of people talk about diversity. My thing is, my, my students see, I bring a diverse group of people, my, in my class, I think I can stand up and say out of 90% of the, 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 the professors, my students take field trips and I'm not embarrassed, like kindergarten, like the, they take field trips to understand. I think that's important to build those relationships within the community to show, because in the black community, we relationship no, And it makes sense when we build those relationships by not just showing up one time, maybe for Martin Luther King, a Black History Month event, but that we build these relationships, and that's one of, one of the things I like about the micro internship. I'm proud to say a lot of the micro internships, uh, students get aware they're dealing with people that's very different than them. And yeah. so I learned they learn respect, not not by not by me saying you need to be respectful, you need to be kind, but that if they're gonna be professional, they're gonna be working with teams all across the world. And we've had yeah. teams work uh, with students, uh, we, we work with companies in uh, South uh, South America. South Africa. I recently, uh, uh, last semester, picked up a, a, a client in Albania. So, uh, uh, right. So, so, so that, that's cross cultural. Just all and then, tell me just just briefly. I, then I, I do want to go quickly to another hot topic. Oof. But um, but what's the what's the racial uh, you know profile of your classes? Would you say? Ah, uh, it's probably ninety percent white. I mean, it's a uh -huh. it's a southern it's a southern ba it's southern Baptist school, and it's and they're Baptist. trying to do better. So here's the reason why you get uh, diversity uh, out of most universities is not because of the academic prowess that the universities want more diversity. It's the athletic department. The athletic oh. department bringing more football players, bringing more basketball players, track, uh, soccer. That is what gets, and that's what to me that's what's most disappointing. When you talk about diversity right. across across, it's through the it's through the athletic department. It's not through the academic, okay, which, okay, which we are supposed to be uh -huh. uh, uh, shepherding. Okay, so that's going to segue us. Before <laughs> we started, this was not on our agenda, but we just you know before we started, we were uh, Dr. Green was telling me about a, a very interesting situation that's going on in Florida mm -hmm. it, around athletics and higher ed and um yeah so i just and we had we started having a really good conversation about it and i just i i'd like to talk about it a little bit we have about a little less than 10 minutes left okay. in our show can, today can, can, can you bring me back so we can do a b part of this we could okay so it, just to, uh, just just to, to introduce it, it and then yeah, we, can, we can stuff. talk about it more fully in terms of Yes. Intervention. <laughs> so just, yeah, just a, just a quick uh, uh, snapshot. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows Deion Sanders. They call him Coach Prime. He uh, went to Jackson State University uh, after the uh, George Floyd situation, helped the university out. It was underserved, uh, did a great job, uh, did, did an amazing job with the institution, uh, left there and went to uh, University of Colorado, uh, but, but did a great job highlighting the uh the the uh, uh the problems uh solutions uh at at, 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 at historical black colleges and he his and his background just to emphasize it was he's, he's, he's a hall of famer hall of famer uh he's one of the greatest athletes considered to be one of the greatest athletes in the in, in the world he uh got uh two or three champion uh champion super bowl rings and uh, he also played he was a dual athlete he played. Uh, he played with the. He played baseball at the national pro level, and he played football. So that's just. Yeah. A, that's, and that's then his he he segued into coaching, in he, higher ed. Yes, he segued and, into. It. And and navigated that world. Yeah. So, sort of so gracefully, thing, let's just so, say gracefully. Yeah, gracefully. But here's the thing about this. Uh, it was a win-win situation. He had no. He had no. Uh, head coach experience. And a lot of times, you got to start as a, a a graduate assistant and work your way up. And uh, he was able to shortchange the system. Jackson State needed the coach. And so he said, Jackson State is in uh, Mississippi. 
It's a historical black college, and they was able, he was able to jumpstart to demonstrate he could do that. Uh, matter of fact, he uh, he was able to uh, uh, he needed to get his I guess get his bachelor's degree. He went to a historical black college to get that, and so he highlighted that if you give a black colleges resources, they can do a they can do a great job, and they had already did a great job. He just was perfect person to segue to that. So in leading that uh, current situation right now. Uh, Ed Reed. Uh, Ed Reed is uh, a Louisiana native. I want to bring that up, but he is also a Hall of Famer in the NFL. He is uh, thought to be one of the greatest, uh, greatest uh, 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 defensive backs in the in the world with Deion Sanders. Okay, and uh, they were also teammates. So uh, he had no. He had uh, he uh, he graduated from the University of uh, my uh, University of Miami. He also. Uh, he also uh, done, done some work there in the pros. He's retired. And he had uh, uh, Bethune Cookman, which is a historical black college in Dayton Beach. Uh, Bethune Cookman is a, a historical uh, educator. Uh, they made an agreement to, uh, to work together in principle. And what happened? Social media, uh, every who's very powerful, very passionate, got on the social media and started blasting the administration. Uh, there were problems in historical black. He pointed out some problems that was going on and highlighted those, and he just blasted the institution. Mm -hmm. And eventually, people pointed out, you know, man, you're, 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 you're a father and son littered with, with profanity, so you can't act like that. It's a, uh, 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 Bethune Cookman is a, is a uh, uh, Methodist uh, University Christian school. You can't do that. He uh, cited apology. But then he went back on and, 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 and lit him up again. I'm sorry, lit him up in, in terms of uh, going on social media platforms and started, started right. again. And it segued into the administration was left with a situation uh, where they hadn't signed a contract yet. This is all, he's just going on campus informally. No, it's just a, a gentleman's agreement that we're going to get you. And so the, the administrator decided, the president decided, uh, we're going to go on a different, a different way. Uh, we're not going to hire you. And, and as they, as the as the proverbial word that all hell broke loose uh, in, across the country right now, everyone's chiming in uh, right. on both sides. Uh, they say, well, some people are saying, well, he was passionate. What he said was wrong. He was unprofessional. Uh, that's that's that, that's the people that support him. The other people saying, like uh, at the institution, are saying uh, we got sponsors like Disney. That is not the brand we want to want to serve. We're a Christian institution that doesn't serve, and and so it's a and so right now, uh, the the students, you know, students are protesting on campus. The uh -huh. the, uh, the everyone has a side. It's it's hot. It's hot topic across uh, platforms. Uh, ESPN is talking about it. Uh, the uh, Fox Fox Sports talking about it. Yeah, yeah. The, the barber shops talking about it. It's a hot issue on so many levels. Uh -huh. And so that's where we're at. Okay, well, you know, I do think we need another <laughs> yes. we need another session to yes. dive into this. Uh, what I want to highlight for our audience is that um, this these are issues that exist at um, any right. university. Uh, yes, number uh, exactly. one, the sports and athletic component and the financing of universities at Ohio State University has the largest English department in the world, and I'm sure other things, has a, a, a library like nobody has ever seen. And my friend who's a professor there was sort of very, you know, you know, academics are often kind of, you know, <laughs> skeptical about all the emphasis that's put on athletics. And then she said the football team built that library. Yeah. So these are these are issues that are just intertwined in higher education. You cannot separate them um, because they not only do the football games, but the ad, but but alumni who are fans, you know, contribute to the university because they want a team. I have a niece when she was she was in college, bright girl fantastic candidate anywhere she was looking for a university because she knew she wanted to be a lifelong fan and she found a university where she could wherever she was living she could be a buff she it went was... to the university of colorado okay. so all to say i want to say these dynamics 
are not particular to this particular university. No, agreed. But yes. what you do have is you have these star athletes who are taking on, and the issues that exist are not particular to that university. Every university has their can of worms. Yes. There's no question about it. Yes. But what you've got is you've got a star who's coming in and who's calling it out, and then yes. the role of social media. And then all the players that are around, you've got Disney, you've got the students, you've got the parents, you've got the alumni, and there's the administration trying to hold the line. And, you know, anyway. Uh, it's, 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 we call it a big, it's a big mess. It's a big mess. <laughs> anyway. Big mess. M-E-S-S, big mess. It's a big mess. <laughs> Say that again. A big it's miss, like a miss. M e s s. Oh, big miss. mess. Oh, yeah. yeah that's southern. That's my southern. It is a big, big mess. mess. Yes. Yeah, but it's good. It's very in instructive. And one of the things I start going at is, well, you know, is is there something that could be done? Is there something to kind of pull this together? And with that, we're going to have to stop our show, and Daryl and I are going to have to come back because, you know, he is going to be the expert in answering this question. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some time to think about it. Okay. So Daryl, it's been so great to have you on the show today. Yes. So fun. This is Mercy Russell with the Remarkable Relationship Show. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please write me at mercy at leadershipwithmercy.com. If you want to communicate with Dr. Green, you can email him at Tell us uh, your email address. Uh, Daryl.green at okbu.edu. Okbu.edu. We'll put it in the show notes. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll be back soon. Mm -hmm.